I'd like to welcome you to this new interview with Buddhist All International, and we've got a very special guest today. Uh, his name is Elio, and he is a translator of Tibetan texts, and particularly specializing in Dzogchen texts. And I'd like to thank Elio for coming by, and thank you very much. So, Elio, can you uh, talk to me about how did you uh, become a translator in the first place, and particularly for a particular school like Dzogchen? It's not that I had a vocation to beca become a translator, but it just happened. So during the course of my study, I learned uh, to a certain degree the Tibetan language. And then uh, uh, people uh, start to ask me, uh, could you translate this, could you translate that? And so it was a kind of a, a spontaneous thing. Yeah, it's more natural. Yeah, so nowadays people, they have courses, uh, and things like that to become a, a translator, but uh, uh, because they have an idea to become. I did not have an idea to become anything. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to learn Tibetan language so that I could learn better the, uh, uh, the teaching and uh, communicate with my master. That was my uh, main purpose. So, yeah. In terms of translation, did you think that this idea of, um, you know, translating Tibetan texts would be a more uh, would be a better way to serve you know the community and no no I didn't uh, I did I was uh, always doing uh, like uh, uh, my main uh, uh, activity was uh, trying to apply the Buddhist teaching mm. but then uh, since uh, I acquired the skill a certain level of skill of translating then I was other people asked me so then it became a kind of my uh, my job yes. somehow to uh, uh, to translate but I want to continue like a little my story uh, from before because you asked me how I, I approach uh, the uh, Georgian teaching so then when my teacher died in uh, that was about in uh, 86 uh, uh, then I decided to move out of the uh, monastery and also, uh, I had a relation with many other Tibetan teachers. One of them was the, uh, the previous uh, Kalu Rinpoche. And uh, so last time I met a previous Kalu Rinpoche in uh, uh, France, uh, he asked me if I could uh, join a project of translation in India. So then I accepted uh, and uh, I went to India and I stayed there about 20 years mm -hmm. working on this uh, a particular project which is uh, <coughs> uh, connected to the works of uh, Control Lord Rotaye. And uh, Kalu Rinpoche asked me to collaborate in the translation of one which is called She uh, Jiazhe, which uh, it's, uh, it's a kind of uh, encyclopedia of uh, uh, Buddhism, uh, Indo Tibetan Buddhism. It's uh, in uh, uh, three volumes. And uh, so for 20 years, I and uh, about other 30 people at the beginning started to work on this uh, translation. Then, of course, uh, uh, in the course of the time, translator became less and less because also the condition we were living in uh, India was not so, you know, a bit rough. And, and so uh, what was the outcome of this uh, translation? You've, you, you've got all these volumes of, you know, immensely important uh, Yes, the, out, the outcome that uh, it took us 20 years, but now we have uh, <coughs> all uh, published in English. One of my friends uh, was kind of a good translator also. I worked with her for 20 years. She's called Ing Ingrid McLeod. She uh, went to India with all the vol English volume. I only work on uh, uh, four volumes, uh, uh, four English uh, books of this. The first, uh, like... One is called uh, Myriad uh, Worlds, which is uh, presenting more or less the uh, kind of cosmology according to uh, different aspects of the Buddhist teaching, Hinayana, Mahayana, Kala Chakra, and also Dzogchen. Then um, I work on the uh, Buddhist ethics, another part of that, and which explains um, the the ethic uh, in the different um, uh, spiritual pursuit of Buddhism, in Ayana, Mayana, Tantra, and also like a special section connected to the uh, Dzogchen teaching as well. 
Then I work on uh, uh, one other that we entitled System of Buddhist Tantras. That is playing like mainly the four kind of uh, tantras and uh, the uh, the Nimapa particular classification of uh, uh, the the tantras. And the last one I've been working is called also Element of Buddhist Tantra, which is uh, more an explanation of the uh, two phases of uh, of the practice uh, of the highest tantra. We are several translators in the Dzogchen community. Some are particularly dedicated to the translation of this uh, uh, visionary uh, teaching. I am also partially involved and also involved with other kind of uh, translation of text uh, from ancient master connected to the Dzogchen teaching. Also, sometime I've been working quite a lot on texts of, of uh, uh, Tibetan medicine. As for myself, uh, I, I did not first uh, start out as a translator of text. Uh, I did uh, mostly uh, oral uh, translation for different uh, kind of uh, uh, teacher. And now I work more on uh, uh, books uh, of the uh, Tibetan, uh, original Tibetan uh, uh, writers. Uh, and uh, particularly, of course, my interest uh, it is uh, uh, focused on the, on the Dzogchen uh, uh, teaching. Um, and uh, also uh, now, since I work for the Qatar project and I work for the Georgian community of Nankanorbu, so, but now as for my future, uh, I, it seems that uh, uh, I am more kind of uh, going toward like, uh, like uh, teaching different things than uh, uh, translate, translating. So you focus more on teaching? Well, it's not that I focus more on teaching, it's like the same thing. Uh, as before, like people ask me more to explain this and to explain that and so forth in different parts of the world where we have our community. And so, you know, the Buddhist world does owe a great deal to translators. You know, the, the vocation of a translator has always been very valued and, and prized in the Buddhist tradition. So, you know, you have uh, Central Asian and Indian monks as, you know, your so, sort of professional forebears, one might say, um, you know, like Dhammaraksha, Moggavadra, uh, and Tibetan masters like Rinchen Zangpo. And do you see yourself as the inheritor or heir to those tra tradition of translators who, you know, translated these texts for propagating Dharma? For, or, or, do they, or, is, or are they more, you know, just for a secular but uh, you see, first of all, um, I'm not very sure whether, uh, you know, there is some kind, of, uh, there is something like a vocation to become a translator. Mm. You know, for me, there hasn't been any kind of uh, vocation to yes, become yes, a translator. Yes. But I think, uh, you know, I don't know if I can dare to speak uh, for Vairochana and the translator of the past, uh, but I don't think they were having... Um, that kind of vocation, and I, I don't, even don't think uh, they had uh, in mind uh, really like uh, a translation uh, as a tool uh, to convert other people like a uh, Christian uh, missionary do. We don't have that kind of idea, as you know, in the, uh, Buddhism. So I think the ancient uh, uh, translator did a, a great uh, uh, job. In the same way, uh, uh, we are um, now translating in order to make uh, available to the uh, to the Western uh, audience. Uh, I can tell you, you know, that for example, even uh, now the young generation of uh, um, Tibetan people, if they have to read a, a Tibetan book uh, on religion or philosophy, they find a lot of difficulty because. Mm -hmm. It, you have to have a background, you have to be educated to uh, read this book in order to understand. It's not that you pick up and you, uh, you understand. So now, for the young generation uh, of Tibetan, uh, for example, people who have learned English, it may be easier for them to learn the teaching from Western translation than from uh, uh, books in their original, uh, in their mother language, you see. Books uh, we have in Tibet on the teaching are not like uh, our uh, Western book, you see. When you pick up a Western book, you read, more or less you understand. But uh, in Tibet, uh, the books uh, need always to be accompanied by an oral explanation 
in order to be uh, fully grasped. Uh, yes. And so there was this thing, book written, but at the same time when this uh, uh, book or teaching were taught, should be always the oral explanation coming together to clarify different things. And that would make uh, the, the transmission of the teaching alive, something alive, because that the oral explanation carried the experience of the particular master or the particular uh, person. You know, book do not carry that experience, you see. Uh, so these two things combined, that they were the specialty of the uh, transmission of the uh, teaching in Tibet. I don't see myself as, uh, um, you know, working uh, full time on translation in the future, although I have many and finish uh, work uh, uh, to do, and I will probably uh, do translation and a certain, certain amount of translation until I die, definitely. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much.